Okay, so spreadsheets have a concept called named ranges. And what it is is just the ability to give a range. So let's say uh, G5 to G13, a nickname that makes more sense. So we're going to call this quantity of lemons. We're going to go through how and why you would do this and show some examples using this um, made up inventory of the grocery store, right? It's back in the warehouse where they have a lot of uh, citrus fruit. So you're looking at a list of how many oranges that we have listed by variety, how many lemons and how many grapefruits. I think there's an S on the end of grapefruit. I don't know. We'll say how many grapefruit. Um, you'll notice one thing different about the grapefruit is that there's no uh, price per each and we'll go over why later. So I left that out on purpose to show you another thing that you can do with name ranges. One of the more common reasons why you would use name ranges is if you were working between multiple worksheets. So I went to sheet two and I'm going to be counting the things in sheet one. So you'll see pretty quickly that it's gonna be a whole lot easier if we can just refer to it with normal names. But let's do it the regular way first so you can see the pain points here. The, the number of varieties of oranges. So I'm going to count the number of occurrences of non-empty cells. We'll come over here. Here we go. You can see the formula working right here, but it has to have a sheet one explanation point before it. Sheet one, A5, A12. So this obviously, this works. I wouldn't say it's really human readable, right? You're not gonna be talking to your friend explaining how you did a spreadsheet looking at sheet one, A5, A12, but let's do that. It works, right? So that's the number of varieties. We're going to um, sum up all the inventory. And we'll have to come back here, sum all the quantities, and then you see the pattern here, right? I'm gonna pick up the cost. Like that. So that's doable, it, it didn't produce any errors, but it can be done a little bit easier. So when we go down to lemons, what we're going to do first is proactively name the ranges. So let's go back to this sheet we're going to highlight what we're going to name first. You're going to go to data, named ranges, and then you'll have your little dashboard come up here on the right. And it starts out, it called it named range one. We're gonna hopefully get a, a better name than that. We're gonna call it variety. And I've purposely been a little short-sighted in what I'm doing here in two different ways. And we'll use both of them as a lesson here in a little bit. But for now, we're going to call these variety quantity in total. Now when we come to do our lemons, we're going to count the number of varieties. We'll do count A, start the parentheses. And as soon as you type a V, the first choices are going to be the named functions. And there's a little statement as to the purpose of the function here. But if you go down, you can see the one that has the green icon to the left of it is your named range. Go down, left click on that. So close that off with the ending parentheses and hit enter and it works. So the number of varieties is nine. Let's go back, let's double check that. Yeah, there's one more here. So there are nine of them. Let's count it. We're going to count, what was it, the quantity, I think? Let's see, yeah, that worked. And we're gonna sum. So now you've done the lemons and you've done it using plain English. So you've kind of done it how you would explain it to someone, right? I sum the total, I sum the quantity, and I counted the variety. Now let's come and do this for grapefruits and you're going to see the first problem is that I should have done more specific ranges. So if you have multiple ranges that are similar, give them a better name. So when we do the range for grapefruit, we're going to say grapefruit. And you notice I wanted a space there, but you're not allowed to do a space. You can do an underscore or you can just skip the space and just grapefruit variety if you want. Let's do that. And the second thing that we're going to do is instead of limiting the range to 12, what you can do, and you could also do this in the original formula as well, but it's a good practice for named ranges. So when you go back and add to them, you're not stuck. So this range now is going to start at K5 and then go all the way down to the bottom of your spreadsheet in the column K. If I click done, 
you can see now that the definition of the range goes all the way down to 1007. So 1007 may seem like a bit of an odd number, but if I go all the way down by holding the control key and pressing down, 1007 is the number of rows in my spreadsheet. So now when you add a row, it's going to automatically add that data into that named range without you modifying the named range. So let's do the same thing on the quantity. We'll highlight this. We're going to add it and just get rid of your last row. Now I'm going to go through and fix the names of what was referring to the lemons. And I'm just going to do that all from this dashboard. And now I have good names here for grapefruits and lemons. And then let's add the oranges. And as you look at the names of these name ranges, a few other things to keep in mind. You can't just use the word true. You can't use the word false. And you can't name it something that is also the name of a range. So you couldn't name it A2 colon G6. These have to be uh, referencing within the same file. If you want to do a named reference from outside of the file, you can try the import range function, but that's outside the scope of this video. So we're not gonna go into that. Now we're gonna do one more thing with the named range. We're going to count the number, the varieties of the grapefruits. So that's gonna be straightforward. We're gonna copy this formula and paste it. We'll go in and change this from lemon variety to grapefruit variety. And you'll notice when this was a named range to the lemon variety, it didn't move. It's a fixed reference. So if this were a reference, say, to A10, when I copied it down here, it would have incremented down because it would have been relative reference. But named ranges in Google Sheets act like fixed references. They, they, so they don't change when you copy and paste them. We're going to count the inventory as well. Now the cost of the grapefruits, we're going to do that differently because we're going to say grapefruits are so expensive that there's a market price, kind of like expensive seafood. And right now that market price is 980. Let's name that range. Obviously in this example, you really don't need to name it because you see it right here. But just to be aware that you can do this as a reference, it can just be one cell. We'll say market price. And then the cost of the grapefruit inventory is 98 times, there it is, market price, select that. And $960.40, I want that to look like currency. Let's copy the formatting from C12 and apply it. And now if the market price changes to $10, that's going to update the price of your inventory. So there you go, I hope that was helpful and I hope that uh, you can use name ranges to work in your spreadsheet a little bit easier. And if you like that video, please subscribe in the lower right hand corner and click the little icon of a bell and then you'll see the new videos as they come out. Thanks.